Hello, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, uh, I'll give you a brief overview of Innova Biosciences and our bioconjugation expertise. So today we're talking about gold. Uh, the most common gold particles used in diagnostics are 20 to 80 nanometers, the most common being 40 nanometers. Uh, these have traditionally been conjugated by non-covalent passive absorption technologies um, or more recently ligand, uh, attaching ligands or other biomolecules to the naked gold to try and strengthen that, that conjugate. Uh, the difficulties associated with this are the needs for optimizing the conditions for each different antibody such as pH, salt concentrations, etc., uh, hitting the correct PI. Uh, various centrifuges and other uh, processing uh, that's involved in that. At Innova, we measure the, uh, the quality and the dispersal of the gold colloid before we apply the coat using this uh, 650, 530 wavelength scan. Uh, you can quite clearly see here that when the, uh, the particles are aggregated, you get this profile and you get this purple color in your, in your gold colloid. When it's properly dispersed in the solution, you get a much, uh, a much clearer peak here, and you get this pinky red color. Uh, Self-assembly methods, the use of ligands have been increasingly common. Again, it's an improvement on traditional passive methods, but it's still susceptible to problems. You can get a successful coating. Uh, which here you can see it's completely coating the particle, uh, but sadly this can dissociate and then you result in this aggregation that can also be caused by destabilization of that, that particle. So what we've actually done, um, here you see the gold and the latex. Uh, again, we won't have time to cover latex today, but we will touch on that or come back to that in a, in a future webinar. So we've taken the gold particle and we've applied a surface coat to that, which then allows us to functionalize that, significantly increases the stability of the particle as a, a pre-conjugate colloidal stability is, is significantly increased. And we can also control the number of reactive groups, so we can vary that so we can have a high antibody loading or low antibody loading, or using different uh, chemistries as we see on this slide. So these are the main chemistries available for coupling to the particle. Uh, with the Innova coat, we, we bind to the amines as a standard, but we can also adapt or provide custom gold uh, conjugation kits with these other chemistries as well. So here you have an example of the enhanced colloidal stability at relatively low concentration um, conditions, such as uh, sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid. And you can see here that under this one molar condition, the, the naked gold aggregates, um, whereas the naked gold in water follows this profile here, and the Innova coat particles under all four conditions also remain well dispersed in the solution. We also subject our Innova coat gold particles to more uh, serious uh, conditions. Here we have 2.5 molar NaOH at 70 degrees. Uh, we've also done 10% DMSO at 95 degrees. And as you can see, most gold colloids aggregate immediately. I mean, most of these we can't actually get to the hot block before they aggregate. Uh, with the ANOVA coat, we're seeing nearly well, two hours, three hours, depending on the, the stage at which that particle is, whether it's coated and, and what it what it's actually conjugated to. So the sig significant increase in the stability of that colloid. This is an example of the Innova coat biotin gold uh, versus a, a ligand uh, self-assembly biotinylated gold. And you can see here we've got a streptavidin spot on the nitrocellulose uh, versus a control with no spot. Um, when we send the biotin gold up this nitrocellulose, so you can see it binds to this spot very cleanly and there's no background, whereas with the self-assembly where that's dissociated or, or was destabilized initially, you can see the aggregation and, and the purple color of the gold even before it's reached the spot and even on the control we get this significant aggregation here. 
this can to some extent be reduced by optimizing your buffers but under these conditions you can clearly see quite a difference furthermore when we do this uh, sequential testing so this is a demonstration of the integrity of the coat a b c and d are the same strip run one after the other so we first ran the Innova coat gold up the strip and then washed it again uh, as you can see there's no background there and then we ran a naked gold at the same OD up that same strip and you can see the binding to the protein IgG spot there very clearly uh, and even washing doesn't remove this aggregated gold particle from the strip so this is the Innova coat gold uh, it's a proprietary surface coat which has provided ultra stability and also enhanced sensitivity. I'll demonstrate some data on that shortly. The covalent linkage of antibodies and analytes is quite unique in the industry and uh, the simplicity of the process also makes it extremely easy to use for proof of principle early stage R&D and is fully scalable up to manufacturing quantities. So. Uh, we can we can discuss that further if you have any questions please email those through so the principle is based on the same as the lightning link with this very easy to use method you simply add your antibody to the lyophilized particles incubate uh, and it's ready to use there's a hundred percent recovery it's optimized in such a way that you vary the amount of antibody that you add and the efficiency of the reaction is such that you should have none or very minimal unbound material in there. Uh, again, as we say, we've covered the stability and the sensitivity. I will now show you on this graph here. So here we have a large protein, IgA, um, a comparison between uh, passively conjugated gold particles, uh, all the same gold, the same antibodies, the same buffers, everything was maintained exactly the same except for the passive conjugation here and the ANOVA coat conjugation here. This was read on a Kyogen reader, so it's an arbitrary signal intensity, but you can quite clearly see the increase in the sensitivity between the ANOVA coat and the passive, and also uh, here the percentage binding curve uh, also demonstrates that. On a small molecule, again more difficult to work with, and we see this quite often with a wobble at the low end on the, the fringes of the sensitivity of the assay. Uh, with the ANOVA coat, we've managed to increase uh, the limit of detection to a, a lower uh, concentration here, and you get this nice smooth curve. Uh, I hope this has been useful to you.